Fortnite. You know what? I'm just gonna say it. I want Fortnite in Smash. And frankly, I'm tired of pretending that I don't. Clap at me all you want, but I genuinely think Fortnite is fun, and I think the way that they shake up the game each and every season is really, really cool. And with it being one of the biggest games on the planet, it just would not surprise me at all if they included Fortnite and Smash in some way. But for a full character, I think the obvious choice is Jonesy. Some of you guys are probably thinking that there are enough default characters in Fortnite where we could have a full Bowser Jr. and Koopalings type scenario. I just think that Jonesy is the best pick here. Jonesy's basically the main character of Fortnite. Whether it's because of popular fan opinion or because Epic Games always intended it, Jonesy is typically at the focal point of Fortnite. And the current season of Fortnite basically plays with the idea of the multiverse or alternate waves of reality, and they focus in on this by using Jonesy to illustrate these alternate timelines. All the different skins that Jonesy has throughout Fortnite aren't just skins anymore. They're actually meant to be the same Jonesy, just caught in different time loops, different waves of reality. Now, if you're gonna go through all that, constantly having this character be the forefront of your marketing and using this character to tell a pretty elaborate story, it's pretty safe to say that this character is your main character. And so for that reason, with both the community and the developer now attaching themselves to Jonesy, it just makes perfect sense for him to be the character you play as in Smash. Also, Jonesy would definitely want you to subscribe right now. Now, the great thing about Fortnite is their whole model constantly has skins being added to the game. So there is a gigantic pool of skins that we can choose from in order to pick Jonesy's costumes for Smash. Because there are so many, I definitely may miss out on your favorite, and that's okay because this is just my concept. I'm just picking the skins that I personally prefer or that I think would work well as a group together. So first, the default costume is Jonesy the First. Which makes sense, this is the very first appearance of Jonesy, the one that many are familiar with, and the one that was in the game before it was even a battle royale. So being the default costume is perfect. Second is Agent Jones. This is one of the more recent additions to the Fortnite mythos for Jonesy. He's the secret agent that has to basically fix the multiverse. So making him an official character, giving him, you know, a real name and a real role to play in the story, just makes sense to have him as a skin. Plus, that suit is clean. Following that is Jonesy in his Chapter 2 default costume. When they shifted from Season 10 to Chapter 2 Season 1, they redesigned the default costumes for all of the characters. I really like this, and while color-wise it is still similar to Jonesy the First, the design is cool enough that I'm alright with it. And then we have Brainiac. This one's just a simple enough recolor that turns Jonesy into a zombie. But hey, I think this one is really nice, and it's one of the few straight-up recolors that I included in this concept. The fifth costume is Bunker Jonesy. In the Season 9 trailer, he hid away in a bunker to survive a volcano eruption, and that explains his long hair and beard. And of course, you know that I had to include a pink skin, and what better than a skin created for Valentine's Day? This is the Love Ranger skin, and it turns Jonesy into a Cupid-like statue complete with wings. Next. No, that's not Thor from Avengers Endgame, but it definitely is inspired by it. This is known as Relaxed Fit Jonesy, and that's definitely my kind of Jonesy. I don't really think this one has a story behind it, it just kind of showed up on the shop. But it's definitely got dad bod vibes. And the final costume is Skull Trooper. This is the oldest skin on this list, besides default Jonesy, releasing all the way back in Season 1. This skin became a legend based on how rare it was because it was so seldom in the item shop. People literally sold accounts that had this skin in its inventory. And it may not look like it, but that is in fact a Jonesy in that face paint. I debated whether this was sufficiently Jonesy-ish enough to be a skin, but I ultimately decided that Skull Trooper was just kind of too important for the Fortnite community to not have as a skin in Smash. And I think these eight skins represent Jonesy very well. There's some old, some new, and it plays into the narrative that Fortnite has now. But now let's talk about the big boy, the moveset. This is something that I genuinely struggled to come up with. A big thing about Fortnite is that they have an ever-changing sort of meta. Items and weapons that existed last season don't exist this season, but then they might return the next season. There's a huge list of items that have been gone for a long time that used to be staples to the game. Like, do you guys remember that they used to have shopping carts as vehicles? Like, I totally forgot about that until recently, especially because now there are actual cars in the game. 
So I feel like you could potentially make a few different movesets depending on what era of Fortnite you wanted to focus on and just whatever personal biases you have already. So first let's talk about the basic kit. Your normal moves, your jab, tilt, smash attacks, these are all going to be things that are pulled from the wide range of weapons that Fortnite has. I imagine a handful of them would utilize the pickaxe, but they'd be some of the weaker moves, like your tilts or your softer aerials. The stronger a move is for Jonesy, a sort of matching strength weapon might be used. For instance, down tilt could be a simple pistol shot downward. It wouldn't be crazy strong matching the pistol, which isn't a very strong weapon in Fortnite. Meanwhile, something like a smash attack could use a shotgun or an explosive weapon. There would absolutely need to be some kind of liberties taken here since these weapons really don't have knockback in the home series. But hey, it's Smash. Creative liberties are the name of the game. But now it's time for the elephant in the room. Building. That's literally what separated Fortnite from other battle royales, their unique build mechanic. You can destroy objects and receive materials from those objects, and then build either a wall, floor, ramp, or pyramid. And I think it would be a disservice to Jonesy to not have any building involved in his moveset since it's so integral to his home game. But we also need to make sure that it's not just taking Steve's mechanic and copy-pasting it onto Jonesy. It's gotta be a little unique. Now, one thing you could do is make it so that whenever Jonesy uses his pickaxe in a move, he harvests, indeed in a similar way to Steve. So say your jab uses the pickaxe. You could potentially gain occasional materials while using that move. Another option is that you could just have passive materials where you just occasionally gain them over time. I'm really unsure which direction the material farming should go, but I think both of these are solid methods. Now as for the actual building, which I've decided is going to be his neutral special. We've seen these architects in Fortnite build these massive cathedrals and you know, the Taj Mahal, and that just doesn't have any place in Smash. Apart from making it really difficult to play on, I'm not trying to make my Switch crash because of the 500 builds that have suddenly appeared. I think there should be a limit, maybe 3, 4, or 5 builds that exist at any given time. Anything more and it just might become too much since they're even bigger than Steve's blocks are, and Steve's blocks definitely can cause problems sometimes. And speaking of Steve's blocks, the way that his mechanic works is that they get placed and then they slowly break over time. For Jonesy, I think the build should work the opposite way. Whenever you place a build in Fortnite, it starts as a frame and it has a sort of transparency that gets filled in with materials over time. During this time that it's being built in Smash, characters would still be able to go through it since it's technically got holes in it. But then when it completes, it would be a solid platform that a character wouldn't be able to go through. This makes it so you can't just instantly cut someone's recovery with a single input. And then on top of that, I think it should also only take one or two hitboxes to break down. Because the structures themselves are big enough that if they were also sturdy, they would be a big problem. As for the actual building as well, you'll cycle through each of the structures. So rather than picking them based on different inputs, you've just got a predetermined order that you'll constantly loop through. Now I'm going to be upfront that I'm not super satisfied with this harvest and build mechanic, and I'd be totally open to ideas and criticisms. I just know that it has to be in his moveset because of how integral it is to Fortnite. It would be like Steve without his blocks. And that was all just for one special move, so let's talk about his side special, which is a grenade toss. This wouldn't just be any grenade toss because you're actually going to cycle through a few of the different throwable items that Fortnite has had. First, you'd start with the basic grenade. Easy enough, you throw it and it explodes. Next would be a clinger. These stick to the opponent if they're hit and will explode after a short time. Next in the rotation would be a stink bomb. This would kind of work like the smoke ball item where it covers a certain area with a sort of smoke effect. And this would actually deal very gradual damage to all players inside that area. Lastly is an impulse grenade. These would pop all players hit by it up into the air, including Jonesy himself. It wouldn't put you into free fall, it's just sort of meant to pop you up and you have to think on your feet. His recovery has two options for him. The first is his up special, which would be a jump pad. We don't see these too often right now in Fortnite, but for a while they were staples to the game. And it's simple enough, it launches you upward, and then you glide for a bit for some horizontal movement. You can also end the glide prematurely, and it wouldn't put you in free fall. You could almost look at this as like half Sonic, half Snake's recoveries. You could also have a tether recovery, which uses the grappler, which is almost like Luigi's grab in a way. It's very plunger-like, but this would actually let you grab the ledge, unlike Luigi's. And finally, his down special, and this, I think, could be a little bit divisive, but it's just a straight-up heal. Shield potions are a big part of Fortnite, constantly healing a little bit of your damage that you've taken in fights. 
To balance it out for Jonesy in Smash, I'd give him only two small shield potions, which would each heal like 10% each. But the catch is that you only get those two potions per stop, so once you pop them all, you're out. This would kind of work like Hero's Heal spell, but you know, not totally random. It's only 20% per stock, so I don't see it as this crazy broken move, but I can also see why some people would dislike a straight up heal that doesn't really have much downside. Jonesy's final smash is the end. This starts with him activating a rift to go, which teleports any players in the immediate area to a special cutscene. Then, many rockets teleport onto the group of enemies before a final meteor hits, sucking them into a sort of black hole, which then explodes and sends them flying. Or, if they're over 100%, immediately kills them. This calls back to the Season 10 event known as The End, where this kind of happens, but it doesn't attack the players and instead destroys the island. Frankly, I think you could do a few things with Jonesy's final smash, but I think that this one is one of the more iconic ones, especially because this event resulted in the black hole that broke the internet for a little bit. So that's his moveset, but of course, as we know, plenty more things come with a DLC character. The stage, for instance, has got to be Tilted Towers. I just frankly cannot think of a more iconic stage. People who don't even play Fortnite make Tilted Towers jokes, even to this day, and despite the fact that that location hasn't been on the Fortnite map for a long time. As for any me costumes that might also come from Fortnite, I've got two ideas. The Tomato Head and Beef Boss costumes. These are like in-universe fast food mascots which have become very popular for the series. They'd be perfect for the oversized heads that Mii's have, and it would be a nice way to include Fortnite costumes in the game on top of Jonesy. I mean shoot, the whole Mii Fighter lineup could be nothing but Fortnite costumes. They just have an endless supply of them. But I just didn't want to go too, too crazy in this video. So there you go. You can call me cringe and laugh at me all you want. I think Fortnite's fun and I think that Jonesy would be cool in Smash. And with only two or three characters left, I needed to make this video before I looked really foolish. Besides, if Jonesy gets in, I will 100% be able to use the default dance as a taunt, and that is an A++ in my book.